Hi, I'm going to continue where I left off in that last video. I am not really sure why I put this put um, this conditional probability mass function. This is this is a hard problem. Um, let me change color right now. Um, what's hard about this is um, we know that probability y equals y. If you go back up there, that's a that's a binomial. So on the bottom. I can substitute in the density function for a binomial down here, but up here I don't see a nice function for the joint distribution. Um, you know, when I put in x equals 0, y equals 0, I get an eighth. When I put in x equals 0, y equals 1, I get 2 eighths, 0, 2, 1 eighth. So I was just sitting thinking about this. This is not, I don't even know if there is a nice closed form. So if you want to give me a nice closed form solution, you know, in terms of x and y for this, that, that would be great. Otherwise, um, the only way at the moment I can think that I would do it, um, I want to, I want to kind of erase, I don't know if I have a, a eraser here. Um, is that what this is? Yeah, what I could do is just find this, uh, do it as a piecewise function, but it's a little bit painful. It will take a while. Um, I'll just start it off and show you what I mean by that. I mean, the, it can only take on so many values because it's discrete and it's only defined at, you know, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 2, 3 for y. So, for example, um, maybe this was an easier way to do it. Yay. Now I know. Get rid of this over here. Um, so we could have started out and said um, P, oh, let me grab this pen again, P of uh, X given Y, uh, X given, so we start off at Y equals zero and we define P of X given Y equals zero. So um, in this case, if y is 0, that means there were totally no heads, then um, x can take on the value 0, 1. The probability 0, meaning that there were no head on the last throw, would be a certain event, and that there's one head is not going to happen. So there I've defined p of x given y given x equal to 0. Then I can define p of x given y x given y is equal to 1. So same way, um, x can either take on the value 0 or it can take on the value 1. So if we go back up to our chart, um, given y is equal to 1, so I'm sitting right here, um, that's a 3 eighths total probability. So it's either 2 thirds that x takes on the value 1 or 0, so it's 2 thirds and 1 third. This would be uh, two thirds. This would be one third. Then I could define probability x given y. X given y is equal to two. This is going to be uh, one third that x is zero and two thirds that x is one. And then probability of x given y. X given y equals three um, is equal to zero. So if I get three heads, then it's certain that the last flip was a head. So I've defined the conditional spelling out every value that y could be, So, but I don't see a nice closed form solution. But if you can come up with one, uh, all you need is that definition for the, the joint, which I don't see at the moment. So we'll put bonus here if anybody wants to go back and uh, look at this. I'm re I really need this to go in the numerator, but I can't find a nice closed form for that at the moment, but it is midnight, so maybe I'm just not thinking. Um, so here by definition is probability of y given x, the density function, the conditional density function is this, and otherwise it's this, but again, I mean, this is just the probability x is x and y is y over the probability x is x. Same difference. Um, all I wanted to show here was that um, if I sum this over the support of x, it's a really nice little proof I should be doing, but if I sum over support of x, I get 1. Otherwise, this is a valid probability mass function. Um, 
if x and y are independent, then probability x given y should just be the marginal of x because I have independence. Um, I hope you can see that. And expected value of x given y equals y is I'm just multiplying the conditional times x. Um, law of unconscious statistician holds. That's what I'm showing here. And uh, I, I believe in solutions. I probably wrote this, this, this little proof out nicely. Um, down here, let's do, I guess, do another one. Suppose x and y have joint probability of mass function. Here it is. Here's the points. Um, so what's the probability? 1, 2 would be uh, 4 39ths. Uh, 1, 3 would be 9 39ths. Uh, let me see. Uh, 2, 2, 4, 8 39ths. And this would be 2 times 9, right? 2 times 9 is 18 39ths. So this makes sense. This would be 13 39ths. This would be 36 39ths. This would be 12 39ths. And this would be 27 39ths. So this is one third. This is two thirds. Um, 12 39ths is uh, 4 thirteenths and 9 thirteenths. Okay, so um, here's y's density and here's uh, x's density. Okay. Find the conditional probability that x is 1 given y is 2. So that's the probability that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2 over probability y is equal to 2. So x equal 1, y equal 2 is 4 39ths divided by y is equal to 2 is equal to 4 thirteenths. So this is 13 39ths, which is one third. Okay, so notice the probability x is equal to 1 given y is equal to 2 is equal to one third. But um, that's the same as probability x is equal to 1 is one third. So I can see now I have independence. Um, determine the conditional probability mass function. So again, I could either do this in picture in, in pieces, but I think we can see that probability x equals x is equal to um, one third, two thirds. So what is this? This is just um, x over three for x is equal to one and two, right? And probability y is y. Let's see, it's either 14 or 13. So what is that? Um, y squared over 13 when y is either 2 or 3. So the conditional mass function, probability of or p of x given y, is equal to the joint, which we have up here. So x y squared over 39 divided by the marginal for y, which is right here. So y squared over 13. So this is equal to, it's always the math I have a hard part about. This is this one third x, right? Well, which actually we just said a minute ago. So probably x given y is just a third x, but this is just p of x. So I know x and y are independent. Yay. OK, so determine the conditional mass function the other direction. I'm not going to be as silly this time. Probably y given x, y given x. Um, because I know that they're independent, that's just going to be y squared over 13, um, y equal 1, or sorry, 2, 3. Right, and this was for x is equal to 1, 2. I mean, no matter what y is, it didn't have an impact on x. And whatever x is doesn't have an impact on y. There's the conditional and the conditional. Are x and y independent? Yeah, I mean, we've shown this in parts b and c. 
So I think I'm going to take a break.